do. We'll take a look at a few verses of Scripture this morning and, and talk about <clears throat> that topic that I uh, men mentioned to the kids is determination. Uh, as a Christian today, we've got to be determined. We're living in a society that is just so wishy-washy. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it drives me insane to see the inconsistencies that we have in our society. And I, I, you know, I attribute a lot of that to just a lack of structure, um, a lack of discipline, and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's not something that is, is a new thing, but it is something, I guess, as I get a little bit older, I, I look at and I begin to um, pay more attention to it because it was going on even uh, in Paul's day. Paul wrote Corinthians. Uh, he wrote 13 books of the New Testament. And uh, when he wrote First and Second Corinthians, uh, he was trying to combat some of that same mentality in that day as what we're experiencing in the day and age that we live in. Uh, we're living in a, in a passive society, a just a lackadaisy type of a society, one that doesn't really have a whole lot of grit, don't have a lot of determination. And can I just go on record and say this here? that as a child of the king, that we've got to have some determination. We've got to. Because this world is determined to knock us off. Somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, they ain't getting me. Mm -mm. You've got, you got to have some determination, some grit. And, and I mean to bear down and really, uh, really live this Christian life. We're going to look at a few verses, 1 through 5 here, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. Paul says this, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Let's pray. Father, help us. Lord, we need to hear from heaven today. God, we need to understand that we need determination in our life. Be determined and be focused uh, on what is important in these last days that we live in. So, Father, I pray that you will just inhabit uh, this place today. Speak to each heart. Lord, whatever they may need to be dealt with about, I pray, God, that you will do just that. In Jesus' holy name, amen. As we see the Apostle Paul is writing to these Corinthian believers, and he is, he is reminding them that everything that he comes with, he comes with nothing more than the Spirit of God and the Word of God from the throne room to these people. He did not use man's wisdom, nor did he use man's logic, in order to convey the message of the gospel. Can I just go on record and say the simple message of the gospel still has the most power? Amen? You must not have heard what I said. That simple message of the gospel still has the most power. It, it doesn't take the bells and the whistles to get someone saved or bring them to the place of repentance in their life. As a matter of fact, many times in Scripture, all that they would stand and preach is Jesus crucified, resurrected, ascension, ascended back to heaven, sitting on the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and I, and people would fall on their faces. As a matter of fact, in, 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 on Pentecost, there were about 3,000 that were born again through a simple message that Jesus loves them. And Paul was reminding them that I come not with anything except the message of the gospel to lead you in your faith walk. See, why was it that he needed to convey that message to them? As you look in the scripture here, as you, you see the context of what has taken place, you'll understand that there was a lot of adversity in this region. Uh, the, the Corinthian believers were inhabited by a lot of different um, uh, false uh, religions that were coming in. And that because they were a port city. A port city brought in all types of different nationalities of people. And with those nationalities of people come their religious philosophies. So the, the Corinthian believers were bombarded at this time with a lot of outside influence. And Paul was reminding him, these people, the message that I brought to you was a simple message. 
It still has power. Get a hold of that. He's saying, I'm determined to, to, to share the gospel with a lost and dying world. Say, so, preacher, what does that mean for us today? That simply means this, that you and I have the, the authority, not only the authority, but we have the right and the responsibility to do just as the Apostle Paul did. You are bombarded as well in this world. If we think about it, we're bombarded by lots of different things, lots of outside influences, lots of people's philosophies. And, and we've got to be determined to stand on what is true and what is faithful. Look, you, you, you've got churches today that are just that are watering down the gospel. You've got preachers that are preaching from the comic books. That, I mean, it might as well be because their messages don't have any power. I mean, you've got, you've got singers that are singing about things that, 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 that's, that's far from God. Can I, let me share a story with you. I had a phone call probably a couple months ago of a, uh, of a guy who was promoting a singer. Can I, uh, let me just share this with you. And he's promoting this singer, and he says, you like southern gospel music? I said, sure we do. He said, well, this singer, he is from... This area here, I won't call his name. He said, uh, you ought to bring him to your church. I said, well, I don't know nothing about him, never heard his music. He said, well, he, he sings a lot of country gospel. I said, well, okay, that's fine. He said, you know the difference between country, country gospel and southern gospel? I said, no. He said, a steel guitar. I said, well, okay, whatever you say. So he sent me to his website, and I get on this website, and I begin to listen to his music. He said nothing about Jesus in at least three of the songs that I listened to. And one, of, uh, one of the songs, he mentioned the name of Jesus one time in passing, but yet they slap a label on that stuff and call it gospel music. Let me tell you what the world's trying to do. The world's trying to pervert anything that is godly. They're trying to water it down. If they, and you say, well, why are they doing that? It's because the influence of the world is the influence of the devil, the, 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 the pressure that the devil and the temptations that the devil puts on people to build churches and to build their reputation. They're, they're, they're all the time pushing and promoting themselves. And what winds up happening is, is that the gospel message, that simple gospel message, gets distorted. Paul said, I'm not going to distort the message. He said, I'm going to stand on the truth of the Word of God. He said, I didn't come with anybody else's philosophies. I didn't come with enticing words. He said, I didn't come with any of those things. But yet, I came with the message of the gospel. Now, I think about that, and I thought about how that the Apostle Paul, he, he was a man that was determined in his life. He was a, a guy that even before salvation, before God met him on straight street. He was determined to destroy anyone who was a Christian. I mean, he went out and he persecuted and killed and martyred many of those that were considered Christians. He was a guy that was determined to stand against God. But see, something happened in his life. God showed up blinded him on straight street, got his heart right with, 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 uh, with God. And I'll tell you what happened. Then he become determined to lead as many to Jesus Christ, regardless of what anybody else thought about him. you got to understand who Paul is. Paul is a figurehead in that Jewish community with a lot of authority and a lot of respect. And all of a sudden now he's flipped sides. Paul also said, you know what? He, he said, I'm a chief among sinners. He realized who he was. He realized that his life and his heart was desperately wicked outside of God. And, and there he become determined after salvation to give everything that he had to leading people to Jesus Christ. You know the problem that we as, as people oftentimes have? When we get a little bit of adversity in our life, we roll over and we, we play dead. We get a little bit of adversity in our life, and we, we decide it's just not worth it. Hey, let me say this here. If Paul would have decided that, we wouldn't have had the 13 books that he wrote in the New Testament. I'm sure God would have brought somebody else along <coughs> to get that done, but it would not have been the Apostle Paul if he had said, you know what, I don't think I want this whole Christ thing now that I've got it here. I think I'm just going to go back to what it was. I'm just going to let everybody think, hey, I was just a fluke. I was trying to get in this thing to mess some people up. Maybe I can just do it that way, and maybe people won't realize I've really been born again, but that's not the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul said, this thing's worth it. It's worth it. Jesus changed my heart. Hey, if Jesus has ever changed your heart, you'll know that it's worth it, and you'll become determined. I looked up that word determination, and you know what that word means? It means to be decisive. It means to be resolved. 
It means to be firm. It, it, it means to be steady and bold. You're going to have to have some determination in your life to walk and to, and to, and to travel this faith walk. And if, you, if you're just going to be wishy-washy and let the waves crash across the bow of your ship and you, you get washed across and just decide this thing ain't worth it, hey, listen, you're missing out. God wants for us to be determined in our walk with Him. I, I think about some folks in Scripture that were determined to do what was right. Think about Joseph, how he was in Potiphar's house as he was in, uh, or in, in Pharaoh's house there, and as his, his Pharaoh's wife came along and, and, and tried to entice him uh, into a sexual relationship uh, that, that was wrong. You know what he did? He said, that's not right. He said, I'm in this man's home. He has been good to me. He's taken care of me. Not only that, I'll dishonor my God. He said, no, 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 that's not going to happen. So he gets, he runs out, and, he, and, and, and long story short, he's accused of something he's not guilty of. He did not back up. He didn't bow. He didn't bend. He didn't cower. As a matter of fact, he said, my God's still able. My God's still able. My God is still on the throne. And it don't matter what the world throws at me. I'm determined to walk down this path. Think about old Daniel. Old Daniel got thrown in the lion's den. We know about Daniel. But see, Daniel was determined. It didn't matter whose house he was under or whose roof he was under. He was going to worship God. It didn't matter. I mean, I know there was a decree that was put out. I know that all of these things were stacked against him. <coughs> but he chose not to do it. He chose to stand for what was right. See, you're going to be faced with those circumstances. Some of you are going to go to work, and somebody's going to push you to the limit, and you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to stand up for what's right, or am I going to continue to go down this path? Am I going to get on the wrong side of God? Am I going to get on a, in, a, in a place where God's going to be dishonored by me? What am I going to do? Yeah, some of you are going to be faced with that. If you had not already been faced with it, uh, you just mark it down. If you're living a godly life, the devil's going to put somebody in your path that's going to try to mess you up. You better recognize that. You better be able to see that. You say, how do I see it? By living close to Jesus. Think about old Nehemiah. Nehemiah had to build some walls, amen? Back in the Old Testament there, he needed to be, build the walls of Jerusalem. But there was so much that was stacked against him. But you know what he said? He said, I'm determined that I'm going to build these walls. Somebody's got to build the walls. Some of you need to build some walls in your life. I'm not talking about to keep people out. I'm talking about protect and to, and to fortify your faith. You need to build some walls. Jeremiah had to build some walls. He built some walls around Jerusalem to raise that place back up. It had been decimated uh, prior to that, and the walls and, and the city had been destroyed. And Jeremiah says, I'm going to rebuild those walls. I'm determined to do what God has put in my heart to do. What's God put in your heart to do? What's God put on you? What has God told you that you should be doing? What has God impressed upon you that you're thinking to yourself, I'm not able let me remind you of something. God, if He calls you to it, God's going to bring you through it. If God is impressed upon you to do a work, then God's going to allow you to do that work. Hey, don't let the devil tell you this ain't worth it. If God's got something for you to do, you need to do it. Build your walls. Then I think about the Apostle Paul, even in these texts here and in his life, he was determined. He was in prison three different times. He was cast down. <clears throat> he was put in a bad place, and, and yet he still traveled, and yet he still preached the gospel because he knew the message was real. I'm convinced that there are many in the church, and I, and I hesitate to call them Christians because they don't really truly believe the message of the gospel. I'm going to tell you something, folks. You have been truly born again. The devil couldn't send all of the demons of hell and convince you otherwise. I'm going to tell you right now, God saved me. There ain't a devil in hell. There ain't a devil in this world that convinced me otherwise. I know what God done in my life. See, preacher, how do you know? Because I was there. Somebody say amen right there. Hey, I'm going to tell you, God's been good to this old fat boy right here. I'm glad that God saved me. Paul was determined, and I'm determined to walk this faith walk. It's been hard sometimes. It ain't been easy. It's been challenging, but it's always been worth it. You might be thinking today, you don't know my struggles. You don't know my battles. You don't know my, my uh, roadblocks. You don't know the things that are in front of me. I don't need to know them. Now, if you want to share that with me so that I can be a prayer partner with you, I'll certainly listen to you and I'll pray on your behalf. 
But you know what's the most important thing? God knows. And since God knows, everything's going to be all right. If you just keep on pressing on. You just keep on walking on. You just keep on moving on. And let God be your everything. See, we've got to be determined to do some stuff. These, these gentlemen that I spoke of, these people that I talked about, they were determined. We've got to be determined to do the right thing. We've got to be determined uh, to please God rather than please ourselves. See, we've got to make our mind up that we're going to please God rather than pleasing us. I, we're, we're too busy trying to please us, please, pleasing old Rick. Rick wants to please Rick sometimes. Rick wants to do what Rick wants to do. Sometimes God says, that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be doing this. See, so if you're not determined to walk this faith walk, you will please yourself rather than God. Look at your neighbor and tell him, he say, he's telling the truth this morning. See, oftentimes we want our way. We want what we think is best for us when we don't realize that God already knows what's best for us. See, we'll mess up and go down a path when we got no business going down because we think that's the best thing for us. How many times before we make a, good, a big decision that we stop and we say, you know, I don't pray about this thing. How many times have we stopped and we said, you know, Lord, I, I, I need some advice on this. I need some insights. Lord, is this the right thing? Is this the way you want me to go? Is this what you want me to do? How many times have we done that or we just went and jumped on it and just said, you know what? This feels good. Hey, everything that feels good ain't right. Amen? Everything that just feels good ain't right. We've got to make sure we're pleasing God rather than pleasing ourselves. And we've got to make sure we're not doing it our way, but yet we're doing it God's way. And we've got to be determined to make these efforts in our life not to do evil, even though we know better. Oh, preacher, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sin if I knew it was sin. You're telling a lie. You're telling a lie. Look at your neighbor. No, don't do this. I'll start saying, look at your neighbor and say, I lied. Don't do that. Listen, you've got to make sure not to do evil. Evil is anything that is transgressing against the very nature of the holiness of God. You've got to make sure that you're not transgressing against the very nature of the holiness of God and doing things that are evil. And I mean, you, you say, well, what is the evil things that we speak of? What is it that you're talking about? Uh, let me just say this here, that evil, it can be a lot of different things. I mean, we, we see evil on the television. We, we look and we say, you know, that's an evil right there. These people were murdered. That's an evil person that would do something like that. These people here were robbed. That's an evil thing that, that took place. And, and I can't deny that. It certainly was. But have we ever stopped and thought to ourselves, when, I, when I'm uh, plotting against someone, is that not something evil? When I'm telling lies on somebody, is that not something evil? Uh, when, I'm, when I'm coveted over somebody's stuff, is that not something evil? Look, evil shows up in a lot of different ways. Let's don't just classify evil as the big things of life, but let's recognize evil as sin. You begin to put it in that perspective, it'll change your ideas and your mind about wanting to participate in the things that are evil. If you love God, you're not going to want to sin. I'll go on record and say that. If you love God, you're not going to want to sin. Yet you're going to want to please Him. If today my wife, if I never did anything for her, or if I never participated in her life at all, do you think that she would, uh, would, would know that I love her? Uh, you can say you love somebody all you want, but until you prove it, it's nothing more than lip service. You can tell God all you want, I love you, God, but until you do something about that, it's just lip service. Lord, I love you, but you know I want to go out drinking tomorrow night. Lord, I love you, but you know that old girl over there, I know I'm married, but she's hot. I'm telling the truth. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Lord, I love you, but I'm going to tell this lie because it's going to benefit me. Look at your neighbor and say, he's telling the truth. We've got to make sure we're doing the right things and not the wrong things. Evil separates us from God. You see, sin is a great divide between us and the Lord. We've got to be determined not to be that person. We've got to make sure that our determination has virtue. Our determination 
as virtue. You say, what is virtue? That is being an upstanding person. If I'm a virtuous person, I'm someone that you can look at, or you're a virtuous person, you're someone that uh, uh, somebody else might look at and say, you know what, they are the real deal. I can trust them. I can, I can tell them things. I can be a part of their life and not worry that they're going to come back and do something that is evil against me or to hurt me. Hey, listen, you've got to be determined to be that type of a person. Say, preacher, I don't want to be that type of person. You don't know the people I live with. You don't know the people I live around. You don't know my family. You don't know my friends. You don't know the, the people I sit on the pew with. Look at, look at, no, don't do this. I start saying, look at the person beside you and say, you're making it hard. No, don't do that. Don't do that. We've got to be virtuous. We've got to people, be people who are determined to do what's right. We've got to make sure that if we're going to be determined, that we do it the right way. You say, preacher, how do I form this determination? How do I practice being determined and having a little grit in life to do what like the Apostle Paul did? You've got to remember now, the Apostle Paul, it wasn't no cakewalk for this dude. It was not easy whatsoever. I mean, if we would experience a fraction of the things that the Apostle Paul had went through, or all of these, these people in Scripture who were martyred for their faith, not only them, but many across the world throughout the ages that have lost their life. If we'd have went through some of the things that they'd went through, we'd have done rolled up and bowed out and bent over and, and said, I don't want no part of this. This dude was determined to tell the old story because he knew how much it changed his life. If you want to change other people's lives and help other people, you need to give them Jesus. He's the only way that we're ever going to make it in this world. The preacher, how do I become determined? How do I do it? First of all, you've got to have the Word of God hidden down in your heart. How many times have we taken our Bibles and maybe brought it to church and then we have to search for it on Sunday night or Sunday morning before we get here because I can't remember where we put it. Somebody say amen. You said amen. I know you didn't want to give it. I mean, I, 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 I bring light to that, but it's, it's the truth. How many times we have, have, have we just fail to even read the Word of God or even think about God's Word, yet we go through difficulties in our life and we think, oh, woe is me. Have you consulted the book? Have you went to the Word of God and see what God says about your circumstances? Have you not, have you not done that? If you haven't done that, then shame on you. You ought to be doing that. You say, well, preacher, I want to be determined. You're going to have to get in the Word. You've got to get into a prayer life. I mean a consistent prayer life as, a, as a, uh, a prayer warrior, not just for yourself. But can I encourage you to have a prayer life of intercessory prayer for others? Can I encourage you to think of somebody else above yourself in your prayer life? Say, preacher, what about my needs? Here's what I've learned as a, pre as a preacher, as a Christian, as a prayer warrior. Here's the things that I've learned. There's been many times I have just foregone the things that I know that I need in my life to go on and begin to pray on behalf of somebody else. You know what God would do? God fixed that mess that was in my life. God fixed that problem. God would, make, would meet that need. You say, well, preacher, why does God do that? Because God knows that my heart was pure enough to try to help somebody else. He said, you're trying to pray for them, so I'm going to bless you too. Hey, I'm telling you, God's done it many times. You, you want the blessings of God? Have an intercessory prayer life. Be a person who is a student of the Word of God. Be faithful to your church attendance. Be faithful to your family. Be faithful to your God. Be faithful to your friends. Be determined to be the best Christian that you can possibly be. You say, preacher, how can I be a, a, a great Christian? You're going to have to surrender your life and let the Lord of heaven take complete control and walk you every step of the way. And if you'll do that, he'll lead you where you need to go. Preacher, I, I want to be determined. I do too. Let me tell you what else I'm determined to do. Nobody goes, I'm going to go. And that's the hell. Nobody wants to go with me, you stay here. I'm going to heaven with I done made my mind up I'm going. I done made my mind up that the devil is not going to hinder me in my journey. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. That's what Abraham said. He said, this ain't my, this ain't my home. This is not where I belong. As a matter of fact, he said, I, I'm going somewhere. I can identify with that. I'm 
I'm going somewhere. I'm going to heaven one of these days. I don't have a death wish. Don't misunderstand the statement that I'm making. But if the Lord was to call me today, hey, don't y'all cry over me for being dead. Y'all better shout because this old fat boy made it. One of these days, I'm going to see my blessed Redeemer. I know that for a fact. There ain't nobody can tell me any different. One of these days, I'm going to see the Lord that saved my life, the one that changed me, redeemed me, and pulled me up out of a horrible pit and set my feet upon a solid rock and established my goings, as the psalmist said. Hey, one of these days, I'm going to see my Lord. I am determined to go to heaven. And what about you? Let's all stand to our feet for just a moment. Are you determined today?